Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, we'll be discussing about cell. If you know you are new to this channel, please kindly press the subscribe button so that you get notification whenever I post a new video. In cell class of today, we'll be discussing about definitely the definition of cell, very brief history. So we'll discuss the cell theory, we'll discuss the types of cell, which is actually the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cell, we'll discuss the structure of the eukaryotic cell. In that, we will not talk about the plant cell, the animal cell, and the differences that exist between what or that are found between the plant and the animal cell. They will not discuss finally the components, the cell components, and their functions, the various organelles in the cell and their functions. So, what is cell? To tell you that cell is actually the basic structural, functional, and the biological unit of life. Cell is actually the building block or the smallest unit that both make up life. Cell can exist in various shapes. And the study of cell actually is called cell biology or cytology. Generally, they just say the study of cell is called cytology or cell biology. All right, cell can exist in various shapes, such as the spherical shape, the oval, flat shape, rod, curved, rectangular shape. All right. Let's talk about the brief history of cell. Cell was, as we know, was discovered by Robert Hooke. When he viewed the actual back of cock cell, and he actually saw little rooms which resembles or look like the rooms that the monarchs, the monks, we actually kept, and he named it cellulae. Many words, little words, room. Other, there are various other contributors to say, such as what Marcelo Mapigi, Antonio Van Leeuwen Hook, and various others. This actually works on plant cell, establishing that cell is actually found in the body of plant Antonio Van Leeuwen Hook using the advanced microscope. Actually, saw a lot of unicellular organisms. He was actually the first or credited as the first to see the some certain protozoa, the red blood cell, and some others, even bacteria. Let's talk about the cell theory. The cell theory actually formed the basis or the foundation of cell, and there are various contributors to the cell theory. We have the Matthias Slidom or Matthias uh, Jacob Slidom. Which in 1938, some historian will say 1939, worked and established that the body of plant is made up of cell or product of cell. We have the Theodore Shiwan, which also established that the body of animal is made up of cell or product of cell. We have the Rudovasha, which uh, actually states that cells come from pre existing cells, though this statement. Some historian contested that Robert Ramak was actually the one that made this statement, but Robert Rudolf Voucher plagiarized his work and did not give credit to the uh, original author. So the cell theory actually says that all living organisms are composed of one or more cells or product of what? Cells. Second, that is number one. Number two is cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life. All cells arrive from what? Pre-existing cells. These three statements have given the authors, the, uh, those scientists that stated it as stated it earlier. All right, let's take a look at the types of cell. We have two basic types of cell. We have two basic types of cell. The prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell. The prokaryotic cell is either the first group of cell or organisms found on Earth, on planet Earth, and they include what the blue green algae, the archae, or the archae bacteria, and the bacteria itself, or the U bacteria, as we call them, such as the E. coli and others. Their unique characteristics include the fact that they do not have a nucleus, a true nucleus, though they have a region where 
the chromosome or other nuclear material are found. That region is actually regarded as what the nucleus. As you can see, the diagram is displaying of the prokaryotic cell is displaying on the board, and you can see that there is no nucleus. The region nucleus is actually where the nuclear material is found. Other characteristics of the pro uh, of, of the prokaryotic cell include the fact that they do not have a membrane bound organelle. For example, they lack the mitochondria, the chloroplast, they lack the Golgi apparatus, the lysosome. Other the membrane bound organelles are actually not what seen in the group or in the group prokaryotic what cell. Usually, they reproduce by binary fission. In some cases, sexually by what conjugation. All right. But some of them are free living, producing carrying out photosynthesis, while others, such as the archaea, inhabit extreme what environment. Some acidic, call them acidophiles, some various extreme thermophiles, rehabiting what very extreme temperature what conditions. So these are actually the unique characteristics of what the prokaryotic cell. Why in the case of the eukaryotic cell, they are unique because they have a double membrane board organ such as the mitochondrion, the chloroplast, the, uh, in, in the case of plant cell, the lysosome, the Golgi apparatus, the endoplasmic reticulum, they have the double membrane bond what, organelles. They also have a true nucleus. They also have a true nucleus that possesses a nuclear membrane. You also have a true nucleus that possesses what a nuclear membrane, and the various the differences that you can actually see between you can see the diagram of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell on the board. The various differences that you can see is that the prokaryotic cell lack the true nucleus or have what we regard as what a nucleoid, while the eukaryotic cell have what a true what nucleus. The Prokaryotic cell also lack the various membrane bonds organelles as I have stated before. Why the eukaryotic cell actually have possess the membrane bond organelles? So we will now take a look at the plant and animal cell. But take note of the fact that eukaryotic cell are actually the cell that is seen in various body, in various multicellular organism bodies such as the fungi, the, the uh, protozoa, the animals which include the vertebrates and the vertebrates and they can develop specialized, come together to form tissues or even tissues coming together to form what organs. So, eukaryotic cells actually make up the body of the multicellular organism. So, but we'll be taking a look at just the plant cell and the animal cell. The diagram of the plant cell you can see on your screen, and it is unique in the sense that the plant cell usually is though. It's not a general thing, it's over in shape, but there are various shapes of plant cell. Even in the skin, we have various shapes present. Why the animal cell, sorry, the animal cell is usually over in shape. The animal cell is usually over in shape. Why the plant cell is has a structure, as you can see on the screen. Now, we'll quickly highlight, before I discuss the various components of cell, we quickly highlight the differences between plant cell and animal cell. For example, the plant cell actually have a cell wall. This is a cell wall. The plant cell actually have a cell wall, while the animal cell lack a cell wall. The plant cell actually possess chloroplast, while the animal cell lack chloroplast. The plant cell actually have what a large vacuum. The animal cell may possess a small or in some cases no what vacuum. Plants cell have what the plant cell lacks what we call central, why the animal cell possesses central. So these are actually the, some of the differences that you can highlight between the plant cell and the animal cell. So we will now talk about the cell components and their function. You can see that the various cell components include the cell wall, plasma membrane. Nucleus endoplasmic reticulum, which can be rough or smooth, ribosome, Golgi bodies, 